Female students kill teacher over blasphemy in Pakistan. On March 28th, Safura Bibi, a teacher at a religious seminary school in the city of Dera Ismail Khan in Pakistan, was stabbed to death by two of her students and a colleague. The attackers were Umra Aman, 24 years old, her nieces Razia Hanfi and Aisha Nomani, 21 and 17 years old, respectively. The perpetrators are members of the Masood uh, tribe living, living in Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas. Uh, Najam Has, Hasnam uh, Likat, the district police officer, said that one of the murderer's relatives, a 13-year-old girl, dreamt that, quote, the victim had committed blasphemy against the prophet and the prophet had ordered them to slaughter the victim. Police rushed to the crime scene after they were notified of the attack. They recovered the weapon used for the stabbing. They arrested the attackers in their homes hours after the murder. The victim's uncle said that Sofuro's body was found in the street with her throat cut. According to the police report, the three had planned their attack against Sofuro with Aman leading the plan. Investigators uh, st stated that Sofuro may have been attacked due to a personal grudge. Okay, so this is crazy. So based on the reporting that I have seen, even from sources like Reuters, in Al Jazeera and Vice, this woman was stabbed because of a dream that a child had. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yes. So there was reportedly a 13 year old girl that had a dream that this teacher committed blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad. And because of that, three other women have went and killed her. Now, just to be clear, some sources report that some one of the women was a teacher, the other were students. Some sources report that all of them were teacher colleagues. So there is a little bit of discrepancy of de clarity of the details there. But yes, that's what's being reported over a dream of a child. Um, that's what they're saying, right? Okay. Now it's well known and well established that the blasphemy allegations and accusations in Pakistan are frequently used to settle personal grudges. Like, for example, there was recently a woman in Pakistan sentenced to death, 26 years old, sentenced to death for blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad. But she says that the accuser accused her of blasphemy because she rejected his advances. Right? So that's her side of the story. So there is some reporting that says that this Wait, who, may be due to a personal grudge, but it's also, but their story is that this originated because of a dream. Okay. I am so confused. Um, what, who, who rejected whose advances? So this was a separate story that we covered several months ago. I'm just giving an example uh, of oh, okay, another okay, blasphemy okay. allegation. Okay, let's not bring that in because this is confusing enough. Okay. Um, so, there's two narratives here. One is that this is a personal grudge, and the other one is that some a kid dreamed that the teacher committed blasphemy, but th that's why they killed her. Uh, why would they kill her? Because of a dream? I don't. Can because you she had a dream that they, she committed blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad, and the Prophet Muhammad commanded her to oh. go after okay. her to protect okay, but his what, honor. Okay, so so the other people who were involved with this, why did they? They didn't have what they just accepted this child's dream as a commandment from Muhammad. <gasps> That's the story. Wait a second. Wait a second. There is hadith on this. I think there's a what? saying that there, there's a belief in Islam that if you dream about Muhammad, it can only be Muhammad. Can somebody confirm this? Meaning Maybe that if you see Muhammad in a dream, it's legitimate. Yeah. That is actually him. I heard that somewhere. Maybe that's why they believed her, because that's why the um, an authentic hadith repeated by a quote said, "Whoever sees me in a dream actually sees me in truth." <gasps> it is true. An authentic what? hadith reported by Abu. So this might make, okay. I don't know if this is why they believe they accepted her accusation, but there is an authentic hadith. Uh, by Abu 
Katada quotes the prophet as saying, whoever sees me in a dream actually sees me in truth. Uh, this is related by, Abu, by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, so by both of the main sources of authentic Islamic hadith. Wow. Uh, and a different, a different hadith by, reported by Abu Huraira quotes the prophet saying, whoever sees me in a dream will see me when awake. Okay. So I don't know if this is the explanation for it because I'm like, okay, this child saw her Muhammad in a dream, t- commanding her to kill this person. But why would the other people be like, okay, we're going to help you do it? Well, bec- maybe it's because, again, I don't know if this is true or not, because if she saw her Muhammad in a d- dream and Muhammad said this, then Muhammad literally, they believe Muhammad, it wasn't just a dream. Muhammad literally told her to take this action. So if that narrative is true, Okay, but even if the second narrative is true, which they had a grudge against her, this is still about blasphemy because they were using blasphemy accusation as a cover. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, because it drives me crazy when people bring in this grudge aspect to things to say, no, this isn't actually Islamic. When their cover up for the whole situation or excuse to legitimize it is on the basis of islamic attitudes and doctrines that are imbued from the text yeah so either way it's still about blasphemy whether they're lying or they're telling the truth even if they're lying and this wasn't about her committing blasphemy and it was about the grudge they're trying to they're trying to make an excuse for it um by saying that they had a dream about muhammad telling us to this is like okay by the way Am I being sexist to think like things are next level when a, a bunch of schoolgirls attack killed their teeth? Like if this no, was men? No, not at all. No, because this is something that's very important that I wanted to get to is that one thing that's being very much highlighted when talking about this news is how unusual it is and shocking it is to people that it was a bunch of women who went and did this. Because mm. if you think about it, blasphemy lynchings are a form of um, honor killing. And they're a form of honor culture. And this is something that is usually taken upon and um, uh, demonstrated, materialized, manifested by men, enacted upon by men. And so the fact that it was a bunch of young women who went and did this act has Mm. shocked people. It's highly rare and highly unusual. Yeah, I mean, I hope I'm, uh, I don't, I don't want to be accused of sexism against men here. But it's genuinely true that men are just more violent because of testosterone and stuff like that. Okay, so you know this is next level. Like the you know, but yeah, the fact that even in Pakistan, even women are feeling like going stabby stabby because of blasphemy accusation. Like Pakistan is just getting this going. Like by the way, this is not us like using anecdotal evidence to describe how bad Pakistan is becoming for people who are new here. The trends, the statistical trends is absolutely that Like this is like not a one-off thing. This is Pakistan is turning into, I mean, it is a hellhole. Um, do you want to highlight some star comments and read some star comments? Yeah, let's look at this. Um, Murtad Skeptic is saying some Muslims contest to that, meaning the whole dream and Hadith situation. So some Muslims contest to that by either saying that it's only true of people who actually knew how he looked, since you can't actually see his real person if you didn't know how he looks. So that's the way in which they kind of contest or Okay, but that but that doesn't the dream of the prophet. Okay, I think the people who are trying to discredit it is because they know how de- de- how destructive that belief is, right? For it, because this way anybody could just come and claim that Muhammad just because I had a dream about Muhammad and it has to be Muhammad since it was in my dream. And he told me this. So all of a sudden, every single claim about Muhammad telling you something in, in a dream <laughs> should be taken seriously because it was verbatim word of Muhammad. So I think like people are trying to find ways to be like, okay, this can be right. Right. But I mean, the Hadith itself doesn't have those clarifications. Those conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how you're going to. And Bubble is saying, if you believe that God ordered Muhammad to marry a six year old in a dream, it becomes easy to give such importance to dreams. Very good point, Bubble. Saying mm-hmm. this was a, a, a means through which Muhammad himself received messages. Okay, but here's the thing. You can never say that God spoke to you in Islam because um, that would, if you say God spoke to you um, in a dream in Islam, then you're, you're claiming prophethood. 
And if you claim prophethood, you're claiming that Muhammad was not the seal of the uh, prophets. He was not the last prophet. And that by itself is punishable by death. Okay. Um, I mean, in some, in, I mean, in some places, I mean, Islamically, it should, it, they, they always, it should always, it, they, they think, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not get banned by YouTube because YouTube might think I'm saying it. Okay. So just you know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying right now people are uh, making it punishable by death, but if it was an Islamic state, it would be punishable by death. So that's why you could claim that Muhammad said something to me rather than saying God said something to me. But anyways, yeah. Ibn, let's read the last Ibn, one. Ibn Gaim is saying, Blasphemy public lynchings are still very rare in Pakistan, about four per year in a country of over 200 million people. Okay, but statistically and empirically, it is still ex way, way, way higher than every other country on the planet. And that's only just yeah. talking about lynchings. When you also bring into the fact of allegations, um, those who are being accused, those who are actually charged, it's, it's, I, um, Last time I looked, and it it's gotten so much worse since 2019. The last statistics that we have that really collects and systematically organizes this data, the end of that data was collected towards 2018, 2019. It's gotten so much worse since then. Um, it's 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 it's. I think the next country with uh, these incidents, it's like half as much. And it's Iran. So in terms of the issue of blasphemy allegations specifically, which is a specific type of crime, a specific type of reason for murder, it it blows every other country out the water. So it's worth discussing. And people yeah. say, well, this is, this is a drop in the bucket in terms of the larger issues of killings in Pakistan. But it's like, this is still, in terms of the reason for these murders and killings, so much more severe than everywhere else in the world. That deserves attention. Okay, I, but I don't. Okay, I don't understand this comment. Blasphemy public lynchings are still very rare in Pakistan. About four per year in a country of two hundred million. Four a year of public lynching is insanely high. What do you like? What do you do? Like, like what is your standard? Do you, do you want like? Do you think like two hundred million? Do you, did you think for a country of two hundred million there were a uh, more um, a high number would be what? Would be like 100 public lynchings per year? Four per year in a country, you know, you're zooming at one, a very specific type of violence, okay? Like, yes, if you, <laughs> if public lynching, which is such an extreme form of violence, okay, happening four times in a year in a country, imagine what that says about violence in general for stuff like this in Pakistan. You're talking, you're, you know, it, it, it's almost as if I say like, I don't know, cannibalism in Germany happens only once a year. I mean, once a year, well, like, well, the population of Germany is this many. And once a year, given that population of Germany is this much, is not very high. I mean, what do you mean that's not, it's not very high? Once a year in a country, an act of cannibalism would be astronomical. It would be incredibly high, okay? Right. When you're talking about public lynching, is, is crazy, it's crazy, crazy high uh, level of violence. And if you have to, it suggests a broader general uh, trend of tension over blasphemy because all of the tensions around blasphemy in Pakistan is not just met by public lynching, okay? is accusations of blasphemy getting arrested getting harassed getting beaten up um getting threats um losing your job um you know there's you know if you add all of that get together uh, if you look at the reports about what the situation over blasphemy cases are in pakistan the situation is extremely tense is extremely horrific the level the level of uh, you know the, the threat to safety and the level of tension that p especially minorities are living under in Pakistan and four public lynchings every year suggests a broader and more general problem uh, uh, surrounding these issues in Pakistan beyond just the public lynching them themselves. But go on. Um, we really need to move to the next news. Okay, okay. Because okay. you have your meeting and we have a lot more news to cover. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So we need to be quick. Okay, sorry about that. But does that was that my point clear? Like today? Yeah, and then he brings up, you know, how it's much higher in India with public mob lynchings. Well, you have to understand that 
blasphemy is a subsection of public mob lynchings, right? Mm -hmm. So in there's so many issues of mob violence in Pakistan that we can't even cover, particularly against Hindu children. It happens so frequently that we can't even cover it. So like I was saying, this is a very, very specific subset of that larger right. issue. That you're Just really about. quickly, and you say, yeah, there are bigger issues in Pakistan than blasphemy. Okay, like we don't, it's, it's I mean, as if I, yeah, okay, sorry. It, we we can talk about things that are not the biggest problem, okay? If As long as they are a problem. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.